one of the questions that we get frequently is what is nasal valve collapse or how do I know if I have a nasal valve collapse or I've had surgery before and my nose collapsed. What does that really and realistically mean? When you look at our nose, we have two areas that we define as valves. One of those is right at the outside of our nostril and one of those is right in the middle of our nose. In the nostril area, it's really easy to assess. P patients would literally be at home looking in their bathroom mirror and literally just take a comfortably big breath through their nose. And if there's all of a sudden one of the nostrils is truly completely collapsing in, then you have an issue where you have lost some of the support of the rims of the nostrils. That's actually a little less common than what happens in the middle of our nose where taller, longer noses tend to have more of a pitched area in the middle of our nose. And instead of a broad roof under a house, if we have a narrow roof, the problem can be the same. You take a breath in and that roof will collapse in. It happens very frequently when folks have had a rhinoplasty years ago, 20 years ago, and they had a very large bump on the nose and it was taken down so far that the narrowing happens just by losing height in the middle of the nose. It also happens because of trauma, I broke my nose, I'm a fighter, I've got an MMA scenario, broke the nose, lost support of the inside of the nose for a variety of reasons, or just other surgical kind of treatments. What we can do is rearrange the inside of the nose by borrowing some of our own cartilage, either from that septal wall that divides the two sides, or in the setting of really complex revisional surgery, we borrow cartilage from your ears. So God gave you two ears in case you needed a new nose. And we can rebuild the middle of your nose with your own material. It's not artificial, you can't reject it, it incorporates in, and we can take that narrowed roof and make it a broad roof. The amazing thing about that problem, which I love, is that folks will come in with dramatic difficulty breathing and the solution is dramatic. So I like big problems. Big problems have big solutions. And when you correct that, it's a really impressive change for people lifestyle-wise. It's incredible how people will attenuate and gradually become comfortable not breathing. And it goes on for decades and decades and decades. And when we reverse it, it's a pretty remarkable one. So imagine if you're performing at a level where you're a runner, you're a biker, you're trying to be a triathlete, you're just someone who wants to walk up a flight of stairs or carry your kid's bag through the airport. Trying to breathe through your nose, sucking through a straw is pretty miserable. If you've had these problems in the past, they have a solution. The downside is, to be fair, there's not a lot of people, at least in Arizona, who specialize in that. So you'd want to find somebody who's very comfortable with that entire structure of the nose and I'm certainly somebody who specializes in that particular problem.